so I had this dream last night actually okay this morning because I didn't go to bed till late um, and it starts out inside a darkened high school gymnasium flashing colored lights and a disco ball light up the faces of teenagers from the 80s girls with big hair are wearing dresses with thick ruffles poofy sleeves and large bows as they dance and laugh at their senior prom a boy with a muscle disorder with crooked legs, eyes wandering all over the place, arms bent at odd angles, goes up to his friend who's sitting at a table and whispers to her, it's time to mermaid. The girl's eyes light up and she smiles and pops up to her feet squealing in an excited voice that is lacking human intelligence, it's time to mermaid. And he shushes her but she doesn't comprehend the secrecy behind his shushing. She just giggles and walks beside him oblivious to much of the world around her. And in my dream, um, I got the sense that she wasn't entire. Well, obviously she was a mermaid half the time. She just doesn't have much going on up here, not to be mean, but her eyes were like kind of vacant and haha, <laughs> ditzy. So <laughs> before they leave the gym, she sits down to wait for the boy as he goes off to get something. A guy in a black leather jacket notices her from the dance floor, and I get the sense she knows him. like. He asked her out on a date before and he walks up to her and she shakes her head at his outstretched hand as she announces time to mermaid time to mermaid the girl's a human during the day and turns into a mermaid at night and besides needing to leave because it's supposed to be a secret she has to get into the water and the guy seems irritated with this rejection which turns into anger and he bends down and takes her arm coaxing her to come with him and in his mind he wants he wants to more than to he wants <laughs> he wants to more than just dance with her and actually he's planning on kidnapping her the boy with the muscle disorder comes back and takes in the situation and he frowns with the concern unsure of what to do and she's just sitting there like ah, doesn't know what's going on so and I don't know how that situation was resolved because the next thing I remember um, an emperor of the Roman Empire sits upon a throne at the end of a long street either side lined with bleachers upon which spectators await the emergence of a gladiator and his opponent. In the gladiator's quarters, tailors are dressing him and they are unsure of what helmet to place on his head. They dispatch me to the armory to get a helmet, but I bring back the wrong one. And I do this several times, running back and forth, running back and forth, and I eventually choose a silver one with a antelope horn shooting up from the top of the helmet. And when I place this one on the gladiator's head, the gladiator stands and he seems to grow. And I look up at him towering over me and I'm not sure if I'm fearful or in awe and reverence of his imposing powerful presence. And the gladiator waits at one end of the street for his opponent to emerge. The crowd is screaming and clapping as an elephant comes striding down the street along with an army of Mongol warriors. Some riding on the elephant, others running on the ground around its feet. As the elephant reaches the gladiator, he throws off his armor and helmet, but he isn't naked underneath. He's wearing a leather jacket, khaki pants, and a fedora hat. It's Indiana Jones! <laughs> and he smirks like, I got this. And then he bolts straight at the Mongolian elephant, whipping a rope out and throwing it up onto the elephant's back. He starts to scamper up the side of the elephant's belly when a warrior swings down on a different rope. And in, Indy just smacks him, and he, uh, the warrior goes falling to the ground, and then in, Indiana Jones takes his rope and continues to climb up the elephant. And uh, that's how that ends. And I'm not sure if I've shared Indiana Jones' dreams before, but he actually shows up in my dreams a lot. Um, and I, I love those movies, so that's, that's well, obviously that's why. So, at some point in my dream, there I see a quick su succession of static noise um, disrupting my dream world and I'm all of a sudden in a warehouse looking at a boy watching an empty channel on a TV as if he sees something within the snowy pattern a man stands next to him and gestures to the boy saying something about how he has the power to I don't remember what his potential power is which really sucks because I remember feeling quite intrigued by the power that this child had and I don't remember what it was Oh. And I sat there for like a half hour in my bed thinking, and it just disappeared. So anyway, I sense that the boy's like uh, Mr. Universe from Serenity. And I see the man beside me is holding a controller with a series of five buttons which have pictures and symbols. I turn for the man and see my ex-stepfather dressed in, in his police 
officer uniform, staring at me with his hands on his hips. I gaze at him warily, and he gazes back through eyes that seem to glow within the dimly lit room. Nobody says anything, and the moment is only interrupted when I realize there is someone locked within another room at the end of the hallway to my right. I point down the hallway and say, the prisoner's in there. He's the one who did this to your son. His eyes grow wide as he realizes I know something I shouldn't, then takes a deep breath, his chest puffing up, his chest puffing up as he builds up anger. Then he stomps off down the hall to seek vengeance, and I feel a sense of relief that this, um, I feel a sense, it's weird, I feel a sense of relief that, um, okay, <laughs> this makes, sorry, okay, I feel, in uh, my dream, I feel a sense of relief that the bastard's there to take care of this monster who is being held prisoner down this hallway, um, and that whole part was confusing, I don't, Um, so next, I go down the hallway and come to sliding glass doors. Um, so, um, so it is, it's not like a prison cell, it's, there's these sliding glass doors, and the room beyond is pitch black, and this is where the prisoner is being held. Um, I don't know who this prisoner is, what they did, well, oh, I'm just... This part of my dream is just very confusing. Anyway, on the door there are buttons on a remote hanging, there's a buttons on a remote hanging from the door which are the same buttons on the controller from earlier. As I'm examining them, my brother walks up to me and takes it, then pushes some of the buttons. And I gasp as the doors open and I tell him he can't do that because the prisoner will escape. And my brother says he doesn't understand and brushes off my warning explaining he knows the guy. So one of his friends from high school emerges from the shadows in that room and walks out. And I stop him and say he has to stay in that room. And he actually listens and turns around and goes back into the room. After my brother's friend disappears into the dark, my brother and I walk into the room. Our eyes adjust to the dark as we venture further into the room and we see a bed. A shriveled figure is curled up on the bed. It's an old woman with long white hair pulled back in a braid and she's dying. And my brother leans down to her and places his hand on her cheek and says, Stay with us. Take some of my energy and stay with us. The woman smiles and shakes her head, then turns toward me and says, His energy is more powerful than anyone. He has lots of it. Take care of him. He's going to do great things. As she says this, my brother watches her with compassion on his face and a kind smile, still holding her cheek as she dies, continuing to say to her, Stay with us. So that's the last part I remember before I woke up, and I had more dreams. Uh, I had a lot of dreams, and but I won't bore you with those since they're really uneventful and mundane. So, like for example, I, I was in an old childhood home, phoning my mom to bring me a can of lentil soup. <laughs> so that's really boring. There's a lot of that stuff. So that's it. <laughs>